how to repot your houseplants. Spring is always the best time to be repotting. Look how stunning that is. A really good houseplant soil mix. Beautiful, look at that. Mm -hmm. Bam. Welcome to today's video. If you are new to this channel, hi, my name is Rachel and I run my own small business here in Auckland, New Zealand called Growing Green, where we sell houseplants and houseplant related supplies. So make sure to check out our website www.growinggreen.nz if you are in New Zealand. And this is our YouTube channel where we make videos all about houseplants, houseplant care tutorials, houseplant tips and tricks, houseplant products, and behind the scenes of this small business. So if that sounds like something you could be interested in, we would love if you would consider hitting that subscribe button down below. And if you do enjoy this video, at the end make sure to hit that like button down below so we know what kind of content you guys like to see so today's video as you already know by the title and the reason you clicked on this video is that today I'm going to be teaching you how to repot your houseplants now this might seem like a little bit of a basic task to most people but there are a few things that you may not realize that you need to think about before you repot your plant during repotting your plant and after repotting your plant so I'm going to go through everything you need to know today including how to know when your plant needs to be repotted what you need to repot your plant with so yeah sit back relax I hope you enjoy this video and let's just get started so I'm currently standing in my grow tank because I'm going to be using my anthurium as an example today a lot of these are in desperate need of a repot but anyway I'm going to pick a plant let's get started so the first thing I'm going to talk about is when you should be repotting your house plants so currently here in New Zealand it is springtime and spring is always the best time to be repotting your plants and the reason for this is because your plants are coming out of their so-called dormancy period now this is not a true dormancy they don't die back and go to sleep but the dormancy period refers to a time where your plants aren't growing as much they're not taking as much nutrients up and you probably won't see any new growth or anything like that on them so that's what I mean when I refer to the dormancy period and that's why you shouldn't be repotting them in winter because during this dormancy period if you repot them it can stress them out too much and it can cause issues such as stunted growth or it can even just kill your plant if it's too much of a shock for it so spring is always the perfect time to give them a larger sized pot to give them some fresh substrate but you can repot all year round as well it doesn't just have to be spring if your plant is in desperate need of a repot during summer or autumn that's also fine I just always recommend not repotting in winter unless you have a setup like mine which is a grow tent which is temperature and humidity controlled then of course you can repot during winter but for the average house plant person I probably wouldn't recommend it so now you know what time of year you should be repotting your plants you also need to know the visual signs and maybe the non-visual signs that your house plant needs repotting by visual signs I mean things that you can actually physically see that mean that your plant need a repot and by non-visual I mean the signs that your plant may be giving you and telling you that it needs a repot. So let's start with the first obvious sign and that is roots. So I always recommend using clear pots when you're repotting your plant and you may be able to see that your plant has a ton of really good roots. If you are using black nursery pots or if your plant came in a black nursery pot the way you can tell is that the roots will be coming out of the bottom of the pot like this because as you can see in this one here all of the roots have basically run out of space to grow you can see they're all coming through the top here which means that this pot will be basically just full of roots so that is the main visual sign that your plant is in need of a repot and the second sign that your plant may be in need of a repot is that you are watering it way more frequently than you normally would and that the substrate is drying out more quicker than it normally does and the reason that your substrate may be doing this is because your plants roots are absorbing all of that water really really quickly and there's not enough excess substrate around those roots to hold some of that water so it's drying up really really quickly so that is sign number two that you may need to be repotting your plant if you are watering it more frequently than you normally would or if you water and in a few days time you pick it up and it's nice and light again you need to repot your plant. Sign at number three, your plant may not be growing as fast or as much as it usually did. It's a little bit hard to tell over winter, but if you've come into spring and it's been a little while now and the growth season has started and your plant isn't giving you anything, no roots, no leaves, nothing, but the plant still looks healthy, that is also another sign that your plant may need a repot. Once you give those roots more room to grow, your plant will begin to push out more leaves again. So that is sign number three. And the final sign that your plant may need a repot is if it has pests. Now this one doesn't have pests. I couldn't actually find a plant with pests, which obviously is a good thing to show you. But if your plant has pests, it may also stop growing. If you have clear pots, you may be able to see mealy in the bottom there, which is also a sign to repot and refresh that substrate. So your plant obviously doesn't have any pests because that can also hinder its growth. Things like spider mites that you can't see. Look how stunning that is. Oh my gosh. 
So those are all of the signs that your plant might need a repot. Let's just recap them really quickly. Number one, the roots of your plant may be growing out the bottom of the pot. If you have a black nursery pot or if you're using clear nursery pots, you may just be able to see in there that it's taking up all the space and it needs more room to grow. Number two, your plant may be drying out quicker than it normally would. Sign number three is that you may have noticed that your plant has slowed or stopped growing completely even during the growing season. Or sign at number four, the fact that you may have pests on your plant. Maybe you can see the pests, maybe you can't, but it's always a good idea to repot once you do find a plant with pests. So hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you learned something there and maybe one of those reasons, maybe a reason why you are having trouble with your plants. Give it a repot, make sure to refresh that substrate and then you should be good to go. So once you've checked all those signs and you have identified some plants that you do need to repot, it's time to get repotting. So next I'm going to be talking about all the equipment that you will need to repot your plants. Let's go back outside. So now that you have identified the plant that you're going to be repotting, you all obviously need some supplies to help you repot your plant. So today I'm going to be using my variegated anthurium to repot as an example. As you can see those roots in there are getting really crazy and there are also a couple of pups under there as well that I'm going to be taking out and growing on to pass on to somebody. So the first thing you're going to need is of course another nursery pot. Now this is a quick tip do not pot directly into cover pots. They do not have holes in the bottom of them and you will give your plant pretty much instant root rot the first time you water it. So always pot into a nursery pot and then put it into a ceramic pot or any kind of decorative pot so it does have drainage in the bottom and you can empty any excess water out the bottom when you need to so your plant roots can still breathe. So this plant is currently in a 12 centimeter clear pot. Now the general rule of thumb for picking a pot size is one to two sizes larger. This will obviously depend on your root system. You may need to decide this once you've actually unpotted your plant and gotten rid of all the old substrate because sometimes you don't even need to unpot the plant maybe the root system is actually not as big as it looks on the outside maybe they're all just around the outside there's nothing going on on the inside so you can even just repot into the same pot as long as you refresh the substrate that's totally fine your plant will be just as happy but if you do need to upsize it's generally one to two sizes more so I'm going to pick a couple of pots off the wall behind me here so like I said it's currently in a 12 centimeter pot so I'm going to be bringing with me a four centimeter and a 15 centimeter pot. I really don't think it's going to need the 15 centimeter pot but anyway we'll just bring it just in case I need it. The second thing that I'm going to be taking with me into my greenhouse to repot with is a good little potting scoop. Now I know this might not seem like such a big deal and obviously we have to have something to scoop our substrate with but having a soil scoop that is actually nice and thin like this one as you can see it kind of tapers in there really helps you to get your substrate in and around those roots especially if you have a thick root ball you don't want any gaps in between those roots in the soil so you want a nice thin soil scoop like this that you can actually slide it all in there and get it around the plant nice and evenly so Number two is the soil scoop. And the final thing you're gonna to need to repot your houseplant is of course a really good houseplant soil mix. We recommend that you pick yourself up a really good free draining houseplant mix. A lot of the ones that you buy from the big box stores such as here in New Zealand Bunnings and Minor 10 or the pre-made ones can be really, really soil heavy. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it can be if you are an overwaterer or you feel like you're at risk of overwatering your plants, it will not have enough drainage in it for you and you will just end up giving your plants root rot. So I highly recommend you pick up something like our growing green houseplant mix which has actually been mixed with a whole bunch of different substrates such as cocoa chip, perlite, pumice, orchid bark, fern fiber to make sure that the mix is really free draining. But it also has that regular soil mix in it as well so it is perfect for all houseplants, anthurium, philodendron, hoya, begonia, everything. It will work for every single one of those so make sure to go to our website and check out if you're interested. So now you've got everything you need to repot your plant let's go and actually repot the plant. All right so let's have a quick look at those roots before we repot. They are looking so good and so healthy. There's no sign of pests or anything like that. There is a little bit of green algae in the pot but that is from the light getting to the tree fern fiber which it is currently living in. So that is totally fine. That doesn't hurt the plant. So the first thing to do with your plant obviously is to pull it out. Be really really gentle. Try not to break any of those roots. If it is a little bit hard to get out squeeze the sides like that. That will just loosen it up a little bit and help you get it out of the pot. It should slide right out. Ta da There we go. Beautiful! Look at that! That's another sign of knowing that your plant needs a repot, that it all comes out in one piece like that. So I'm going to very gently start teasing the roots to try and get some of that old substrate out and just loosen up the roots a little bit. Because they have been obviously stuck in the shape of the pot, as you can see, it's good to just loosen those up. As you can see, as I get through them, those roots are actually the entire way through the pot, so this one is definitely going to need a bigger pot size. 
So as you can see, 90% of that substrate is now gone. You can see through it, all those roots have been loosened up. I'm actually going to leave the rest of the substrate on here. There's not really any reason to get rid of all of it, especially when the substrate is still looking so healthy. Tree fern fiber, there's rarely anything ever wrong with it. It doesn't really break down that fast. So as long as you get 90% of it out, that is totally fine. If you were using a regular soil like I just showed you, um, you would probably want to get rid of all of it and it would actually come out a lot easier as well than fern fiber. And I'm really, really carefully going to remove it these two pups here and put those in separate pots and grow those on and then I can pass those on to other people. This one looks like it will come out perfectly fine. Whoop, there we go. It actually has a lot of roots. There we go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at this little pup. You can already see the variegation coming through. It's so cute and it has a really good root system as well so that's perfect. So the other little one I'm actually going to leave on there because it actually doesn't have any roots coming off of it yet. It's just growing off the side so I'm going to wait for that one to grow some roots before I can like peel it off. So now that it's out of its pot, it is a good time to test and see what size pot you need to be putting it into. So I have my 14 centimeter pot here and I'm going to put the root ball in and have a look and see how much space there is around those roots. So as you can see, there is quite a decent amount of space, but there are a lot of roots in there. Like it is a tangled mess. So I actually think I'm going to go up to the 15 centimeter size. All right, here we have the 15 centimeter pot and I'm going to put that in there and have a look. That is much better because as you can see, when it's sitting at the top of the pot, there is heaps of space. Oh, that's a bit of you. There's heaps of space in there and room to grow. So that should do it for at least another year. So that's what I'm going to be using. And then for the baby, I'm going to be using a little nine centimeter pot. That's so cute. Perfect. So in terms of substrate for this repot, I'm actually going to be using tree fern fiber. Now, if you don't know what tree fern fiber is, check out the little link uh, up here where you can actually go and watch a full video on what tree fern fiber is. It seemed to be doing a pretty well in just pure tree fern fiber. I do normally repot them into our own houseplant mix and add a little bit of extra tree fern fiber. However, seeing this one came out of tree fern fiber and it was doing perfectly fine, I'm going to be putting it straight back into tree fern fiber. So I'm going to start with the plant out of the pot and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little layer of tree fern in at the bottom. Now the reason I do this is to make sure that the roots have room to grow down because they do naturally grow down in the pot and I'm also going to want to make sure that the top of the plant is level with the top of the pot as well so that will raise it up just a little bit to give it that extra space. All right, now that there are a couple of loose scoops in there, I'm going to put my plant in and see how it's sitting. So that is actually going to be perfect because it sits in there quite nicely and the top root here is sitting at the same height of the pot here. So now I can just go around and fill it in. Like I said previously, now is the time when your slim soil scoop is going to come in handy because you're going to want to hold your plant upright and then use your soil scoop to get in and around those roots. And as you can see from that scoop, all that soil went right down to the bottom, covering all of the roots, leaving no gap. So that's exactly what you want. And as you're filling up your pot as well, remember to tap it in like that rather than pushing it in from the top. By pushing it in from the top, you can compact the substrate too much, which can lead to root rot and it can also lead to issues such as breaking those roots. So don't do that, just tap them in. As you can see, there are no gaps around there. A couple of the roots are poking up, but that's totally fine and your plant will have so much space to grow over the upcoming spring season. It's so exciting. I can't wait to see what this plant looks like in a few months time. So now I'm gonna do the same thing for this little pup. I'm going to fill the bottom of the pot with some tree fern fiber, tuck all of those roots in the pot and then fill up around it. And there we go. It's all ready to grow on nicely in my grow tent and then eventually go to someone else's home. So now all there is left to do is to water them in. I like to use the growth technology fertilizer range, which is the foliage focus and the root zone. These two are made to grow together. The foliage focus is obviously the fertilizer and the root zone really helps get those roots going and also helps reduce the shock after you have transplanted it as well. But any kind of really good NPK fertilizer will be perfectly fine. Now when you water it for the first time after you have repotted it you want to make sure you give it a really good thorough watering and this is also why I love clear pots look at that oh yeah you want to make sure the water gets all the way down to the bottom and then comes draining out like that that's perfect I'm at it. look at that nice that's perfect now don't be scared to overwater your plant as long as you give it time to ah! As long as you give it time to drain and dry out between waterings, that your plant will be totally fine. Giving it a little bit of a swirl like this as well while you wait for it to drain can also distribute the water more evenly around the pot, which means all of the roots will have access to that lovely juicy water. And same thing goes for the tiny little plant as well. 
Give it a good water. Oh, this water is getting everywhere. Ta -da. And there you have it. This plant is going to be so much happier. It's going to be breathing a sigh of relief right now. And it's going to have so much more space to grow. And as you know, as those roots grow, the bigger the root system, the bigger the leaves will hopefully get as well. So I do have a couple of final recommendations as well. And things that you do need to consider when repotting your plant. And the first thing is that if you bring your plant home fresh from the nursery, I highly recommend you don't repot it for at least the first couple of weeks. The reason for that is that it will be adjusting from the old environment to your new environment. And if you repot it during that time, it can be kind of a double stress for the plant. And you find your plant might sog or it might drop some leaves. So if that's happened to you before, that could be a reason why. The second thing is if you you putting your plant and you see pests in there or you see pests in the soil I highly recommend it leaving it in a solution of water and hydrogen peroxide for half an hour to an hour just to make sure that that kills any of the pests or the fungus or anything like that in the soil before potting it up into new soil otherwise you're going to just transfer those pests from one pot to another which is not what you want we do also stock hydrogen peroxide on our website I'll put the link in the description box down below but if you're not in New Zealand and you do have hydrogen peroxide and you're not quite sure how to mix it with water to get the right ratio we do have a poster on our website as well that you can download and check all of those out if you do have any further questions relating to repotting of your plant soil anything like that at all make sure to leave them in the comment section down below or send us an email all my information is down in the description box come over and find us on our Facebook and our Instagram pages we'd love to chat with you and see you there and obviously I post updates of my plants there as well so you can see how this is doing a few months down the track so now I've got to go and put this back into my grow tin I'm gonna to have to try and find some space for all of these because they all need repotting this spring and after all going up into 15 centimeter size pots I already did one for our Instagram and that one also went up to a 15 then I'm going to need a whole lot more space in that grow tent but I mean could have worse problems right but yeah hopefully I will do a video on that as well if I get time we have a lot of fun videos coming up on this channel we have a few shows we're going to and of course it's market season coming up so if you did enjoy this video and you want to see more of behind the scenes of the small business make sure to hit the subscribe button down below check out the rest of our YouTube channel and also hit that like button down below as well if you enjoyed this video so yeah that is all for today's video I hope you really enjoyed it and you learned something from it I'll see you in the next video bye